Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to do a comparison on the noise reduction in DxO Photo Lab 4, which is called Deep Prime. It's fantastic and Topaz Denoise, which is also fantastic and which I've used for a long time. I did a kind of an overview video of the new Photolab 4 a while back, and I talked about Deep Prime um, in that, and I talked about how great it is, and it really is kind of mind-blowing. Now, in the past, I've used Topaz Denoise, and I've said here in countless, well, maybe not countless, but I've said here in a lot of videos how great it is, and it is great. But I have to say, uh, I mean, if you just want the short version of this video, the Deep Prime noise reduction in DxO is the best I've ever seen. It is better, I think, than Topaz Denoise. I want to do a comparison. Now, what I'm not saying is, hey, if you have Topaz Denoise and you're happy with it, you have to go buy DxO. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you based on my experiences. I started using DxO because I'm looking at replacing Lightroom, and I really like the product, and then I started playing around with Deep Prime, and I was kind of blown away, and then I was like, oh my gosh. So if you have Topaz and you're happy with it and it works for you, that's awesome. You should stick with it. If you're looking for something and haven't gotten something, DxO may be an option for you. There are some major differences between the products. I'm going to talk about that briefly as well. Mostly, I'm going to focus on noise reduction. Let's get into it. I am here in Photo Lab 4. This is an image. If you hover over it in the little film strip below, you'll see it comes up. It says ISO 25,600. That is not an ISO that I would probably ever shoot at, but I did that. I had a bottle of Topo Chico, which is so good, by the way, so good, uh, sparkling water on my desk. And I was like, you know what? I got to test this out. So I jacked up the ISO. I handheld that photo or the camera and just took a shot. And I'm using the same raw file here as I will use in Denoise. So Deep Prime, uh, it's over here on the third tab, right? So this is not a tutorial on DxO. There's way too much to cover. But um, they had HQ, which was high quality. They had Prime before, and Deep Prime is new in Photolab 4. Here's the thing. Uh, if you want to turn that on, uh, let me just show you HQ first. The preview window here, uh, sorry, the preview in this upper right corner will show all three as you click on them. The big preview here in the center with the image itself does not show Deep Prime, so you have to export the photo and compare, which I'm going to do. So there's HQ and then there's Prime, but the new stuff is Deep Prime, and there's a luminance slider as well. If you click on this little thing here, you can move this around. I'm going to start like right over here, and I want you to take a look at... I'm going to move this luminance up to 100. Just look at how much the noise, again, we're looking in the preview window in the upper right side, but if I turn that off and you look at all the noise, and now I turn it back on and you see what Deep Prime has done to the photo, there you go. Pretty amazing. But here's something that's really cool that I wanted to point out. If I bring this over here to where I actually focused on the camera, you can look still sharp. That's the thing about noise reduction is noise reduction will generally just smooth out pixels and often you'll lose detail, and that's one of the challenges when you have a really noisy image. If you try to do a whole lot of noise reduction, you'll often lose image detail. And so that's one of the great things about Deep Prime, as you can see there, if I turn this off, you can see beforehand noisy but sharp, but now not noisy and still sharp because that's where I focused. I shot really wide open like f1.8 or I don't, I don't know what, but anyway. Um, so there we go. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Now there's a lot of controls. This is not a tutorial about how to use Deep Prime. There's some more controls and more things you can do. But what I want to do is export the photo uh, as a JPEG. And I'll do the same thing with Topaz and then zoom in and compare the two. So I'm going to say export to disk. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. And then I'll pop into Topaz Denoise and look at that one as well. Okay, I have exported that. Note that especially if you're using Deep Prime and have a lot of noise direction applied, it can take a couple of minutes perhaps because there's a whole lot going on. So it can take a moment or two to export. Just keep that in mind. I'm now in Topaz Denoise. As I said, I've loved this product for a long time and I'm not saying it's a bad product. It's a great product. I will probably still use it in some situations, although I am going to use DxO Deep Prime for my primary noise reduction. But Again, I don't want to tell you that, hey, if you don't have DxO, you got to go get it. It depends on what your needs are. Topaz Denoise still works just great. You've got a number of different modes here. Uh, again, not a tutorial about everything, but there's Denoise AI, there's AI Clear, and there's Low Light. And I'm set my view here in the comparison view so you can see um, you know, all, all three, basically, the original and the left, and you can see what's going on here. 
You've got auto settings. This is an AI based product. Um, I've got auto update preview on, which means every time I move a slider, it's going to recalculate. So if that annoys you, you can turn that off. So the thing is with these AI tools, they consume a lot of system resources and can be kind of slow. But what I want to do is I just want to bump up this noise reduction and I'm just going to go to 100 and I'm going to go to sharpness of like 60 or something as well because what I want to do is just is bump that up so that I can get a high level of noise reduction but still retain some sharpness. So here we go. Now let me move this preview window over here and I'm going to back out a little bit to get a slightly wider view of it. Uh, maybe a little bit tighter actually. I just want to be able to see kind of the area that's in focus as well as some of that side where the noise is really prevalent. And there we go. So it's now calculated. And again, I've got all modes comparing. I'm really focused on the denoise AI mode. I, I'm not here to show you the different settings and, and that sort of thing between the three different modes. But the denoise AI, I mean, honestly, it looks good. Um, that's pretty crisp. And um, the noise, I think, over here looks pretty solid. Okay, and just for fun, I, I did a, a split view here where you can look at the before and after. Um, down at the bottom, you can see I'm in manual mode, which means I adjusted it myself. N is noise reduction. I'm at 100. S is sharpening. Uh, I'm at 60. Um, I didn't do any of the recovering down below. But if you look at the noise reduction over here on the left, I mean, massive improvement. Like I said, denoise is really good. I'm not picking on the product in this video. I just think Deep Prime is better. So if you look at this, pretty solid. I will say that some of the sharpness uh, seems to have been reduced. Now, I could try to increase the sharpness to 100, but I think you just got to be careful with that. Let me do that and see what happens. Okay, I've got noise reduction and sharpening both at 100. So here's the before and after sliding window. Again, the noise reduction is fantastic. I mean, that is a massive amount of color noise and grain and just uh, and it's really gone. I will say it looks a little bit splotchier there than I think it does in DxO. I'll show you the comparison in a second. But again, pretty solid. I, I can't get any sharper and I can't get any more noise. I've done both at 100. So I'm going to save this and let's go compare. I'm going to save it as a JPEG just like I did with DxO and go compare the two up close. Okay, so I've completed the noise reduction on both photos. I've, they've, they're both back in DxO because DxO does have a library module, which is one of the nice things about it. And one of the key differences between the products, DxO is like a full featured kind of a Lightroom replacement. It's got lots of filters, lots of tools, in addition to amazing noise reduction. Whereas Topaz Denoise is what I call a point product. It's designed specifically for noise reduction and it does a great job. It's just that's all it does. And so that's one of the reasons that I think that DxO is actually better because you get what I consider the best noise reduction, but you get a whole lot of other features. Now, the difference, of course, is the price. DxO for the Elite version, which has D Deep Prime, is $150. Denoise is about $80. So there is a price difference, but they're very different products. Um, I'm frankly surprised that DxO, being a broad-based editor with lots of tools and filters, I'm surprised that their noise reduction is as good as it is, but it's pretty amazing. So if you take a look at it, here's the DxO photo, and I'll just zoom in 100, and you can just take a look at it, and that's with Deep Prime applied. I mean, I think that looks pretty amazing, to be honest. Now, if I pop over here to the denoise photo, you'll see that it's, uh, number one, it came out not as bright, but also the noise uh, reduction in the background, it's a little bit splotchier. So if I kind of pop between these, DxO, brighter, I think crisper than that noise reduction in the background especially is super, super smooth and yet still very crisp where it says Twist of Lime and the Topo Chico label. I think that all looks really good. Whereas if you pop over here, the, the sharpness of Topo Chico and Twist of Lime, the text in other words, is just fine. I don't know, know that there's a big difference there. Uh, I'm just trying to look between them, DxO and Denoise. And by the way, you can see the file name here at the top. This has been um, applied through Denoise. So this is the Denoise one. But if you look at that, I, I think that the clarity of the text is fine between either one. It's just that Topaz, it came out darker for some reason. Now there is a brightness setting in Topaz Denoise, so you can increase the brightness. But I would probably just do that back in my main editor, whether that's DxO or Lightroom or whatever else you may be using. But I'm really looking here at the noise reduction. So again, background noise there, kind of splotchy. Again, 25,600 ISO, indoors, handheld, kind of lower light, not conditions that I would normally shoot in necessarily, especially not handheld. But regardless, that's what the test was about. And there it is, kind of splotchy and in my opinion, 
super clean. I, I, that's, that's why I just think DxO is better. It's, and I've done this on several different photos and I see the same results every time. So it's not just, hey, on this one photo, it did better. I just think that it performs better overall. So one more time, there's before, uh, or I should say there's DxO with its results and there's Topaz Denoise with its results. Now, to be clear, depending on the photo, you may not need the amount of noise reduction and clarity you know, that you're getting out of DxO. Again, I'm not saying you have to give up Denoise if you're using it, it's a fine product. But if you're looking for an all around editor that does a lot of things, including what I consider the best noise reduction, I think DxO fits the bill. If you're looking for a point product, like Topaz Denoise that comes in and does a fine job with noise reduction, there's nothing wrong with Denoise. Again, I'm not trying to convince you to, to move or spend money. I just wanted to do this comparison for my own purposes because I do have both and I'm trying to figure out which one should I use. And I'm also trying to figure out what are additional check marks in the column for me for using DxO for other things like replacing Lightroom, which is what I'm kind of in the midst of exploring. So one more time, there it is. There's the DxO output and there's the Topaz Denoise output, both great products. I'm personally a fan of DxO. I think that it is the best noise reduction I've ever seen. I, I'm honestly blown away at how well it's done with this and has uh, I've seen similar results on other photos. Feel free to download a trial of either one, test them out and see what you think. But that was my comparison. I'd be curious to your feedback if you've got both what you're seeing and experiencing as well. But mostly thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Just wanted to compare these two because I have talked about Denoise for a long time, and as I said, it's a great product. But now that I have DxO and I'm using Deep Prime, I'm gonna continue using that for noise reduction, especially if it's ones that need a lot. If you just need a light touch, um, Denoise is gonna do that, and obviously it performs well with a heavier need for noise reduction as well. I just think it's not quite as good all around with, uh, you know, compared to what DxO Deep Prime will do for you. So. That's my findings. Your, your mileage may vary. Just my opinion piece here. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends. Adios.